show you how to do a stent in urology. I'm gonna try to see if I can do this with one, with one person, see how it goes. This is your cystoscope. If you have a port in for your fluid, you have two access ports. I'm gonna close the one off. I'm gonna open this one. That will let me feed the wire in here. This nipple is on here. That will allow me to feed wires and stents through without having fluid come back at me. So it's a seal. Light source where your camera would go. I have all this hooked up. So this will be simulating your bladder, ureter, kidneys. It's gonna go into your bladder. You're gonna have a guide wire. These guide wires have one end that's more flexible than the other end. You want to give them the more flexible and less rigid. You don't want to give them the rigid end. You're poking a hole in the ureter, you don't want to do that. Feed your wire in. You'll see the wire come out of the cystoscope. So now I fit it into the opening of the ureter. I'm gonna have it run into the kidney. If you're putting a stent up, you'll have two ends of this stent. You can see that one of them has little lines on it. That gives them a measurement. You want to feed the end that has no lines on it onto the wire first. You'll hold the curl in your fingers onto the wire. And you want to hold this one still, let it feed your wire, push. Send it as a surgical tech as soon as you have found that wire. Try hold it back straight so they can feed this forward. You hold it like a tightrope. What I would typically do is hold it not as free in the air because your hand will move around. Right? And hold it up against my body. So I'm more likely to stand still and less wobbly than my hand free in the air every time they're pulling on it. So that way when they pull, they can just pull, push, and it stays tight. Start feeding this pusher on. It has a metal ring. Remember I said you want to feed the end of the stent on first that does not have the lines. That will leave the end with the lines out so when they're feeding it in they can tell when they're fixing to get to the end of it and when they see it under scope. You want to meet the lines of the stent to the line on this. Feed your end with a line on it first with your pusher and that will meet this line to these lines. And then as soon as you get that started, hand that back to them, hold this up against your body again. It creates a tension. You want it to look like a tightrope like that. So they can feed this orange pusher and that will push it up through the scope. It's hard to do with one person, I will tell you. What you want to see that do is curl in the kidney like that. And then they're going to pull back on this wire, which should leave the curled part in there. They may pull it back a little bit. So whenever they're pulling that stent back, you're feeding this back in there, so it's already in there, ain't controlled. You can feed it right back in the ring. That way when it comes out, it's already controlled, it's not gonna fall on the floor. You want this to curl in the bladder, curl in the kidney. That way that kind of locks it in place. Your ureter does a thing called peristalsis, which is how it moves the urine through the ureter and into the bladder. If it looks like that, it's not curled, but peristalsis it will slowly work that stent out of there. So you want that to be locked in place 